doing this like outside? Um, uh, we're growing inside. In terms of your experience on the show, how was that? Everything is like scripted. So recently I was catching up on one of my most favorite TV shows of all time called Catfish. A reality show about this guy named Neem who helps couples who have formed an online relationship but have never met in person actually finally meet for the first time. Like the name might imply however, a lot of times the person on the other end isn't always who they say they are which can lead to really, really bizarre mishaps. While watching this show, I came across an episode that caught my attention. The episode featured a man by the name of Tristan, a Michigander that has fallen in love for another Michigander named Lara. Tristan's story was very heartfelt and honestly it was one of the best catfish episodes I had watched to this day. I highly recommend that you check out the episode for yourself before watching this video. I'll leave a link in the description which will show you exactly where the episode is available for you. But for those lazy bums who don't want to hunt for the episode, here's a quick recap. In the episode, Tristan reaches out to Neve and the gang to help him figure out if this girl he met under the Michigan hashtag on Twitter actually is real. Tristan and Lara apparently had a pretty good relationship as Lara even went as far as to make sure Tristan was taking his medication that he needed to take after getting into a severe car accident a couple months back that left him with a traumatic brain injury that he luckily bounced back from. Some of the red flags that tipped Neve off and made him believe that Lara was a catfish was the fact that Lara and Tristan never met in person even though they lived so close and the fact that Lara refused to FaceTime slash video chat on multiple occasions also led Neve to have some red flags. Later in the episode however, Neve uncovers that Lara is indeed who she says she is and that the reason why she didn't meet Tristan previous times was because she felt nervous as she'd never felt the way she felt towards Tristan before and she was scared of losing him, which I think is quite heartwarming, honestly. Near the end of the episode, the two lovebirds eventually finally meet up and hit it off, until two months later when they unfortunately break up. I know, it's sad. Anyways, the most coincidental part of all of this is the fact that Tristan and Lara weren't all that far away from where I actually live. So being the person I am, I decided to reach out to the both of them and ask if they'd be interested in doing an interview on their experience being on Catfish and the reasoning as to why their relationship didn't work out. After going to sleep, I woke up to find this. I got a message here. Tristan actually responded and he's down? What I didn't quite realize yet was that I was about to go down a rabbit hole I never expected to go down to begin with that would change the way I view the show Catfish forever. Hello, my name is C-Dust, and as you can just see there, I just got a response back from Tristan. Um, and I, I messaged him back, um, trying to see if I could set up uh, an interview with him. And um, I just got a message, so I thought we'd take a look at it together. Um, so let me get my phone out here, and we'll check the message out. <laughs> what? Gu guys, guys, you not believe this. Wait. He says here, he says, we should probably go over everything before filming because I can give you the sweet and short answers about it or tell you everything I don't care at this point. Just depends on how deep down the rabbit hole you want to go on your channel. What is he referring to? And, and that's what kind of like what I was thinking, like what the heck is he referring to? And then he goes on to say this, he says, Neve is cool and they are all very nice but also kind of a blank. Behind camera, he joked about 
obviously referring to Laura here, um, that Laura had STD, asked to send me her nudes jokingly, and when the cameras weren't rolling, she he acted like I didn't exist. What? And then he goes on to say here, the episode is actually fake. Guys, I think we might have just uncovered something here that I didn't don't think we ever expected to find. Honestly, I thought this was just going to be a simple kind of like interview with Tristan. Okay, it's been about uh, a couple hours since um, that previously recorded segment. Um, but Tristan responded here. Uh, he says, I, I told him basically, hold the phone. This is insane. Um, would you be interested in doing an interview? And he said that he's totally down. He just wanted to know what kind of questions I'd be asking him. And I just kind of gave him the basic rundown of the questions. He says, bet. So it looks like we're going to be meeting up with Tristan here and possibly getting some answers of not only what happened after the show, but what happened during the show. And this crazy behind the scenes stuff that happened here. I'll get back to you guys when I'm able to figure out a date when to meet Tristan and um, yeah I think we'll go from there because yeah I, I don't know what else to say um, this this could be a wild ride and uh, I hope you guys are ready to get buckled in and go on this ride with me until next time though peace so it's been about almost a month and a half um, since that last bit was recorded uh, because there has just been like a lot of issues I was unable to get someone to help me film because I wanted to have someone on the second camera but now a month and a half later um, I was able to actually get one of my friends to help me come film with Tristan so we can actually interview him and get some answers on this whole thing um, so yeah Right now, I'm getting ready to head out. I'm going to go get some food, got to get some gas, and then we're going to pick up my friend, and we are going to head over to Kalamazoo, and we're going to meet up with Tristan. So, hope you guys are ready for this wild ride. Let's go. Two, three, four. I don't want to go to school tomorrow. I could study thinking about you, and you know how I always do. I don't wanna go to sleep tonight when I can stay up thinking about you And you know what I always do Marbella night You said you would, you said you would, you said you would, you said you would Hello Hey man, how's it going? Okay. So we drove to Tristan's house and we picked him up and we went to the car shop to go and drop him off so he could get his car and then we headed to find a nice quiet place to actually interview him. Oh, and that's Mark and Katie by the way. Doing this like outside? Um uh, we're going inside. Oh, okay. okay, good. All right, cool. Cool. After going inside, we rented out a room for us to actually sit in and we got to interviewing. And here it is. Okay, so I guess let's start off with, I guess, the beginning or like, how did you meet Laura, like, in the first place? Okay, and not, not to be like an asshole, but it's Lara, but, uh, yeah. okay, so I just actually, just, like, Sam from the show just the other on Twitter. Uh, and, yeah. And, uh, like, I followed people in Kalamazoo when I moved here. Okay. And, yeah, just started DMing her. Gotcha. And just went from there. Okay, and just hit it off, basically. Yeah. Gotcha, yeah. okay. In terms of your experience on the show, how was that for you? Awesome. I mean, like, it obviously hurt and shit, but, like, everyone's super nice. Like, really nice. It was, it was awesome. I, like, the everyone's really nice. And they have, like, a psychiatrist and stuff that, like, they make sure you're okay before and after. Ah. And, like, they just guide you the whole way, so. Interesting. It's not like they just throw you in and... Just try and expect you to cope with the whole thing as things are unraveling. It's not like kind of how you see it on the show, like, we take breaks, and it was like, probably, I want to say, like, 24 hours put into, like, 30 minutes. Oh my so. gosh, that's mm -hmm. insane. Yeah, it makes sense, though, because it seems like there's a process to it all. Mm -hmm. Obviously, 
assuming you're trying to find the person and obviously trying to get them to meet up, yeah. especially if the other person doesn't necessarily want to meet up, it seems. Yeah, I mean, like, they run back... <laughs> I, feel like such, I feel like it's snitch, but yeah, they run background checks on you. Like, oh. oh, Everything's, wow. like, pre-planned. Like, it's planned that she wasn't going to answer her phone. Um, Everything is, like, scripted. Gotcha, <laughs> gotcha, yeah. So what made you specifically write into the show in the first place? It was a joke, because, like, you know, like, we met on Twitter, so, yeah. like, it was just like, oh, yeah, we're catfishes. Like, uh, like I was literally just kidding with her. I sent her, like, a screen recording of, of like, a fake story of us meeting and like she never met me and she said do it and we didn't think uh -huh. they'd call us back at all yeah like it was just like a joke between her and i exactly and then the next day they did and we didn't believe it for like a week or two wow but uh yeah yeah they do a lot of confirmations screenshots like phone calls and then of course you said contracts to mm -hmm. such um, after being on the show, did people like ever stop you or recognize you like on the street or um, anything? Like, I want to say like four or five times. Oh really? Wow. Yeah, not a lot, but yeah, like one time I was walking into my apartment and like I think people can recognize my car because it's not. Oh, yeah. So like these girls were like, oh Tristan. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. it was kind of cool. And That's then some cool. dude at a bar, no, like two people, like a girl at a bar and then a dude at a bar. <laughs> a dude at Kalamazoo Community College. Oh, okay. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Not that's not cool. a lot though. Yeah, that's that's actually really cool because I I was kind of like thinking that to myself like, do does it just like happen like often or no. like does your life change after you've been on there? No, not really. I mean, I like really still care for her. Gotcha. No, there. Still I love you. So <laughs> I'm blocking. Oh wait, so she she blocked you? Yeah. You said. I mean, like she blocked me on Twitter and. Uh, yeah, I mean, we spoke, I think, when I, I think I DM'd you that we spoke, oh, but like, yeah, yeah. even then she yeah. still doesn't, like, the attraction just isn't there for her, so. Gotcha, so she and doesn't like, want to reconnect with you, but you want to reconnect with her? Yeah, gotcha. I would totally be down, because uh, uh, I do regret it, because it, it, the show didn't really portray exactly <laughs> what happened, like, she wanted to date for, like, months, and mm -hmm. I just moved here, so I was like, I don't want to. I don't have that. a girlfriend, like I just got into school and shit, and uh, yeah, she, gotcha. she like left. So. Gotcha, gotcha. During like the two months between meeting her and the breakup, like what exactly happened there? Like, uh, what do you mean like before? Because you said you, you were together at one point, mm -hmm. so like what caused you just because of the fact that you weren't ready to get into a relationship? Well, or? yeah, so that like we... Like this, okay, so we were like doing like grown up stuff, you know? Uh -huh. Yeah. And we had an agreement not to do grown up stuff with other oh. people, so. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, yeah, and then sh uh, like, we weren't dating, it wasn't like, there wasn't like boyfriend and girlfriend, it wasn't ever a title because that okay. just didn't want to. And uh, yeah, she, she did it with other people, and like, I got pissed, and, and then like, it, it was like super great, and then mm -hmm. from there it just got super fucking toxic. And, gotcha. uh, yeah. I was toxic, she was toxic, and... Just decided to split yeah. things off. I mean, it was, yeah. But yeah, it was definitely more on her side, because like... Like, I, I didn't, it was like I went from not caring, and mm -hmm. then... That was what like attracted her, because I didn't really care. Gotcha. And then when she left, I started caring a lot, and then like that turned her off, because I cared so much. Yeah. So it was like, I was like kissing her ass and stuff. Yeah, and it felt like you were too late, and mm -hmm. you missed your opportunity. Yeah, dude. Yeah, that sucks. Cause I, I like I still love her a lot. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, maybe if she sees this, or if maybe I can doubt it, meet her or something. Maybe we you can, can talk try. about it. There's been people that message her about it. I've tried everything, so. Gotcha. So, yeah. well, I guess we'll see. I guess there's another one. Like, how's school going overall? Uh, awesome school. I have like two years left. Oh, two and, years uh, left. What are you pursuing exactly? Like computer science. Computer science. Yeah. Nice, nice. I'm gonna transfer. I'm gonna finish this semester at KVCC and come to Western. Okay. And, uh, oh, nice. Cool. Yeah, it's, I'm still pursuing that, and as far as like the accent, I'm I'm good. Gotcha. Yeah. That's great, cause yeah, I remember you said you got into a rear. Was it you were rear-ended, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't like as severe as like they made it out to be. I think they're just being like traumatic. Traumatic. For, yeah. 
for the show, but yeah, it did suck though. Yes, for sure. Like, I lost my car, so. Yeah, and it's definitely a process to obviously deal with all of that, mm -hmm. and all the impact left. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Cool. Well, I guess that basically wraps up this Sweet. interview. I had a great time hanging out with Tristan, and I honestly look forward to hopefully talking with him again. Now, a lot of you may think that now that I know the truth about Catfish, I won't be watching this show anymore, but that's not the case at all. The reason I enjoy Catfish is not because of the authenticity of it, it's because of the entertainment value. Take any reality TV show and you'll probably find that a majority of it isn't real. Keeping up with the Kardashians, Pawn Stars, and The Bachelorette, just to name a few, all had info come out to suggest them as not completely legit. But even when that info comes out, we don't just stop watching the show. We continue to watch it because we just like the show in general. TV is made to entertain us, and that's all that really matters. And MTV, if you're watching this, please don't kill me.